Welcome to the Shuv Show. Come and let us return to the Lord. Is studying scripture all Greek to you? Maybe it's because you're thinking like a Greek. Time to swap that linear mindset of check boxes and vanishing points and start understanding life like a biblical Hebrew. Concrete, physical action, and cyclical. What has been will be again. Time to walk as Yeshua walked, the Derech HaKodesh, the way of holiness. Time to shuv, to return to the Father's house and His ways. This is the Shuv Show. He shall come to us as Welcome to the Shuv Show. I'm your host, Christine Jackman. Did you ever read the same story in the Bible a bunch of times and then reread it and have something pop out at you that you never saw before? Well, I had that happen the other day. I was rereading the account from 1 Kings 22 and its companion story in 2 Chronicles 18 regarding Jehoshaphat or Jehoshaphat and Ahav, Ahab. The scene, the divided kingdom, house of Judah under the rule of its fourth king, Jehoshaphat, and house of Israel under its fifth king, Ahab, whose wife was Jezebel. I love reading both Kings and Chronicles because you pick up a few extra details in one account that the other doesn't have. Here's a little more backstory on the divided kingdom of Israel. The house of Israel was comprised of the ten northern tribes. House of Judah contained the tribes of Judah and Benjamin, as well as faithful Levites. House of Judah also acquired those from the ten northern tribes who left their tribal lands and joined House of Judah because they disagreed with Jeroboam, the first king of House of Israel. You see, Jeroboam broke faith with obedience to the terms of the covenant and set up a false system of worship. Things in the kingdom of the house of Israel grew progressively worse, as false doctrine always does. Eventually the roads were blocked so that the ten northern tribes couldn't go up to Jerusalem for the feasts. Listen to this from 1 Kings 15, verse 17. Quote, Baasha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah in order to prevent anyone from going out or coming in to Asa, king of Judah. Ramah is in the north of Jerusalem. Jeroboam's legacy is that he set aside the express commands of Hashem in favor of his own ideas, leading the people entrusted to him into defilement and gross idolatry. Quote, let us go after other gods, quote. In other words, let us disregard what the God of Israel has commanded us. And did God really say? Boy, there is nothing new under the sun. Eventually, the faithful Levites were kicked out of House of Israel. Let's look at Second Chronicles 11, 13-17. Quote, Moreover, the Kohanim, priests, and the Leviim, Levites, who were all in Israel, stood with him, that's Rehoboam, son of Solomon, from all their districts. For the Levites left their pasture lands and their property and came to Judah and Jerusalem. For Jeroboam and his sons had excluded them from serving as priests to the Lord. He had set up priests of his own for the high places, for the satyrs and for the calves which he had made. Those from all the tribes of Israel who set their hearts on seeking the Lord God of Israel followed them to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord God of their fathers. They strengthened the kingdom of Judah and supported Rehoboam son of Solomon for three years for they walked in the way of David and Solomon for three years. Okay, did you hear that in what I just read? There was something else interesting that just popped out. Jeroboam not only set up the two golden calves in like Dan and Bethel, but he also set up, it says, the satyrs. What's that? It's goat demons. We find illumination in Vayikra, Leviticus 17, verse 7. Quote, they shall no longer sacrifice their sacrifices to the goat demons with which they play the harlot. This shall be a permanent statute to them throughout their generations. End quote. Seder, the Hebrew word there is Sa'ir. Jeroboam, when anointed to be king over the ten northern tribes, was warned by God to walk in the commandments, the terms of the covenant, and he would prosper. But it didn't take long for him to go terribly astray the results of which are still felt to this very day. Okay, back to our story. Ahab is the fifth king of house of Israel, who did even worse than its first king, Jeroboam. 
Let's look at Second Chronicles 18, start verses 1 through 34 is what we're looking at. Now Jehoshaphat had great riches and honor, and he allied himself by marriage with Ahab. There it is. Some years later he went down to visit Ahab at Samaria, and Ahab slaughtered many sheep and oxen for him and the people who were with him, and induced him to go up against Ramoth Gilad, that's in Syria. Ahab king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat king of Judah, Will you go with me against Ramoth Gilad? And he said to him, I am as you are, and my people as your people, and we will be with you in the battle. End quote. That's covenant language that you just heard. Okay, continuing on in verse 4. Moreover, Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, Please inquire first for the word of the Lord. Then the king of Israel assembled the prophets, 400 men, and said to them, Shall we go up against remote Gilad to battle, or shall I refrain? And they said, Go up, for God will give it into the hand of the king. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not yet a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him, for he never prophesies good concerning me, but always evil. He is Michehu, son of Imlah. But Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Bring quickly Michehu, Imlah's son. Now the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah were sitting each on his throne, arrayed in their robes, and they were sitting at the threshold at the entrance of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets were prophesying before them. Zedekiah, the son of Kinaana, made horns of iron for himself and said, Thus says the Lord, With these you shall gore the Arameans until they are consumed. All the prophets were prophesying like this, saying, Go up to remote Gilad and succeed, for the Lord will give it into the hand of the king. Then the messenger who went to summon Michehu spoke to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets are uniformly favorable to the king, so please let your word be like one of them and speak favorably. But Michehu said, As the Lord lives, what my God says, that I will speak. When he came to the king, the king said to him, Michehu, shall we go to remote Gilad to battle, or shall I refrain? He said, Go and succeed, for they will be given into your hand. Then the king said to him, How many times must I adjure you to speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? So he said, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains, like sheep which have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each of them return to his house in peace. Then the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you that he would not prophesy good concerning me, but evil? Michehu said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing on his right and on his left. The Lord said, Who will entice Ahab king of Israel to go up and fall at Ramot Gilad? And one said this, while another said that. Then Haruach, a spirit, came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, How? He said, I will go and be a deceiving spirit in the mouth of all of his prophets. Then he said, You are to entice him and prevail also. Go and do so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord has put a deceiving spirit in the mouth of these your prophets, for the Lord has proclaimed disaster against you. Then Zedekiah, son of Kinaana, came near and struck Michehu on the cheek and said, How did the Spirit of the Lord pass from me to speak to you? Michehu said, Behold, you will see on that day when you enter an inner room to hide yourself. Then the king of Israel said, Take Michehu and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this man in prison, and feed him sparingly with bread and water until I return safely. Michehu said, If you indeed return safely, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Listen, all you people. End quote. So this is one of the things that popped out at me. It was Haruach, a spirit. One deceiving spirit infected 400 false prophets of the king of the house of Israel. The 400 guys say, Thus says the Lord. But the Lord has not said. Is the majority always right? 
No, we see one faithful prophet of the Lord standing up against four hundred prophets under the influence of an evil deceiving spirit speaking falsehood. Whoa, we so need to test the spirits to see if they are of God. We need all things to measure up to what does the written Torah say, the terms of the covenant. And our focus needs to be what did Messiah Yeshua do. Let's read further and see the end result of following the advice of that deceiving spirit. Verse 28. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat king of Judah went up against remote Gilad. The king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and go into battle, but you put on your robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself and they went into battle. Now the king of Aram had commanded the captains of his chariot, saying, Do not fight with small or great, but with the king of Israel alone. So when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat, they said, It's the king of Israel, and they turned aside to fight against him. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him, and God diverted them from him. When the captains of the chariot saw that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back from pursuing him. A certain man drew his bow at random and struck the king of Israel in a joint of the armor. So he said to the driver of the chariot, Turn around and take me out of the fight, for I am severely wounded. The battle raged that day, and the king of Israel propped himself up in his chariot in front of the Arameans until the evening, and at sunset he died. Okay, let's go look now at the same account in 1 Kings 22 for a few more details. Starts out with first verse, Now three years had passed without war between Syria and Israel. It's hmm, an interesting note. Then it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat the king of Judah went down to visit the king of Israel. And the king of Israel said to his servants, Do you know that remote in Gilad is ours, but we hesitate to take it out of the hand of the king of Syria? End quote. So that sheds more light on the reason for the war. Okay, then dropping down to verse 34, when Ahab is wounded in battle. Now a certain man drew a bow at random and struck the king of Israel between the joints of his armor and he said to the driver of his chariot turn around take me out of the battle for I am wounded the battle increased that day and the king was propped up in his chariot facing the Syrians and died at evening the blood ran out of the wound onto the floor of the chariot then as the sun was going down a shout went throughout the army saying every man to his city and every man to his own country so the king died and was brought to Samaria and they buried the king in Samaria. Then someone washed the chariot at a pool in Samaria, and the dogs licked up his blood while the harlots bathed, according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken. Okay, here's the prophecy about that. You find that in 1 Kings 21, 17 through 24. Then the word of the Lord came to Eliahu, Elijah the Tishbi, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab king of Israel who lives in Samaria. There he is in the vineyard of Nebot, where he has gone down to take possession of it. You shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Have you murdered and also taken possession? And you shall speak to him, saying, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth, dogs shall lick your blood, even yours. So Ahab said to Eliyahu, Elijah, Have you found me, my, O my enemy? And he answered, I have found you, because you have sold yourself to do evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring calamity on you. I will take away your posterity, and will cut off from Ahab every man in Israel, both bond and free. I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nevat, and like the house of Baasha, the son of Ahiah, because of the provocation with which you have provoked me to anger and made Israel sin. And concerning Jezebel, the Lord also spoke, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. The dog shall eat whoever belongs to Ahab and dies in the city, and the birds of the air shall eat whoever dies in the field. End quote. So what's our takeaway from these account? Revisiting the three things that popped out at me. 1. House of Judah had refugees from the ten northern tribes as well as their Levites who were faithful to the terms of the covenant that God cut with them at Mount Sinai. Note, this included the Gentiles who had joined to the God of Israel that first Passover. 
The lesson learned is if you wish to continue to be faithful to the covenant, sometimes you have to leave the land of Jeroboam. Second thing that popped out at me. Jeroboam had set up worship not only of the two golden calves in Dan and Bethel, but worship of the goat demons. The lesson learned by studying the account of Jeroboam, first king of the ten northern tribes, or house of Israel, is that worshiping in spirit and truth means to obey the commandments the way that Hashem has told us. Destruction awaits those who set aside the word of God for the sake of their own ideas or traditions. Lesson number three of the things that popped out. One lying evil spirit can infect 400 false prophets. The lesson learned is deceiving spirits are real. Truth is not based on our feelings or on whether there's a majority or not. Truth remains truth. Test the spirits. Rely on the Ruach HaKodesh to write the Torah on your heart and enable you to walk it out. Like salvation, that's a gift too. Torah the terms of the covenant. They are the lifestyle of the redeemed community, Jew and Gentile, one in Messiah, shoulder to shoulder, worshiping and obeying our amazing Creator. This has been the Shuv Show. Laila Tov. Good night.